Hello, everybody. <laughs> it's um, great to see you. If you are joining in on the recording, I uh, encourage you to fast forward. No, <laughs> there will be a few minutes while I wait for everyone to show up. Oh, look, we've got a couple of viewers on YouTube. So hi to you guys. I will do some introductions, I suppose. Uh, just to, you know, do some minor adjustments because that's kind of annoying. Having light there. Uh, la, la, la. It's been a couple of weeks since I have been on stream, so actually I'm a bit fresh. <laughs> I'll just change the background so it's a little bit less annoying. There we go. Hello, everybody. Now, what we're going to be doing today is writing Rust. To start off, oh gosh, what we're going to be doing today, writing Rust. And I just need to learn, remember how to type. This thing we want to do is how to compile it. So our, the side on the left is the code that I'm entering. And on the right is the output from the compiler. Hopefully that this is, uh, if you've used just Rust before, this will be very familiar to you. Uh, I'm at a, a website called play.rustlong.org. Um, and you can actually go and enter commands uh, in there. And there's a compiler in the background uh, that will run your code. So that was easy, or at least easy enough. <laughs> so what am I doing now? The first thing that I'm going to do is uh, a kind of a classic computer science problem, which is this thing called FizzBuzz. Uh, apparently, it's a kid's game for teaching division, but um, I've, I never did it as a child. Uh, so maybe it's an American thing. And I want to teach you some Rust along the way. Actually, we'll start with um, doing it like this. So uh, for i in a range, so I've got uh, an index variable in our range between 0 and 100. This is exclusive. If we want an inclusive range, we add an equal sign. And the idea is that if i is divisible by 3, we use the modulo divisible by three. Uh, add an if statement in there. And divisible by three will have zero remainder. Then we print a fizz. And if it is divisible by five, then we print fuzz. If it's divisible by 15, Actually, I'm going to add that we'll want to print fizz and buzz. So if it's just by fizz with no remainder, then we add this one, and buzz. There is a reason why I'm teaching, I'm, I'm in starting with this one, because I'm actually, what we'll do is we'll start with something that's simple and probably familiar to people who have used a different programming language, and then we're going to make it more idiomatic Rust, and so we're going to be teaching Rust along the way. Uh, if you have any questions, just add them in the chat, and I will be more than happy to uh, answer along. Okay, so we're printing fizz, we're printing buzz, and now otherwise, um, otherwise we need to print fizz buzz, and I'm just going to do it the cheat way uh, with an else block. And then we want to, with a formatting thing, these kind of um, curly braces, we can print i out. And uh, print isn't actually a function. Actually, we'll see what happens if I just use print as a function. Rust is going to complain here. Say, whoa, it's a macro. <laughs> so what is a macro? A macro is a function that returns code rather than a value. The reason it's a macro is that uh, Rust is a strongly typed programming language. 
So it doesn't like to use the same function for different. Uh, actually, the, basically, what I've it doesn't like to to do things and have two different ways of being called. So in this instance, we've got a string literal, and down here I've got a string literal and an and an integer, and we need to be able to uh, be a little bit more flexible than a function call because we want to accommodate more use cases. So this is um this is fizzbuzz. Well done, well done to us. Clap clap clap. Uh, I've just received a quite a good question that I thought I would um, start. Um, could you show walkthroughs of some good Rust libraries? No need to walk through any code, but just walk through how it works. I will definitely get to that on a different on another stream. Right now, though, <laughs> uh, I haven't done enough preparation. I've got some. I've got some good ideas. I've just come to mind about uh, which um, libraries I would show off, but I would probably I should reserve that for a future stream. Hopefully that's um, hopefully that's okay. Okay, so we're we're doing fizzbuzz here now, now. This is to me as a as a Python programmer, this would look fine, um, but actually we can do better in Rust. Uh, one of the things I'll start with is uh, I've got all these repeated calls to print, and I would rather like what if I wanted to assign instead in each loop um, I could say I want to say to print which let's think of a we, we, we want some value uh, actually uh, none is kind of our nil value and we want to assign no, 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 no. Uh, I'm going to teach you a trick and that is that we can actually make this a lot less ugly <laughs> and uh, with a different construct. And I'll focus on the if statement. And I want to introduce match. Match is like a select statement if you've used uh, C or I believe Java also has select. So what we're going to do here is return as match on is it divisible by three? And is it divisible by five? And I can say, if it is divisible by three, and it is divisible by five, then I want to return fizzbuzz, which is actually something we don't have in our current implementation. Uh, if it's divisible by three, but not five, Then we want to send back buzz. If it's divisible by five, but not three, then we want to return buzz. And if it's false on both, we can just use these underscores as placeholders. Then we we need to do something a little bit weird, which is uh, I need to convert the string, uh, so this integer, we've got i, and we need to convert it to a string. So we'll see what happens if we, uh, integers have a two-string method, which is handy because we want it to be turned into a string. Uh, and I've got something really neat to show you, which is that all of this stuff returns back to uh, is an expression. This whole block here is one is treated by the Rust compiler as a single expression, and uh, that means it return has its own value. So we can have a two print over here um, for this whole block, and then is it, and we and we've reduced a lot of the duplication, which I like. <laughs> I appreciate that quite a lot. Uh, that we had three, and now we've reduced the repetition, and I think we've also simplified a lot of the logic. At least we, uh, I prefer to see this style of code rather than lots of if elses. I quite like the truth table approach. I believe this won't compile for a reason that's a little bit odd, uh, and that reason is that we've got two types of text, two types of text types. <laughs> uh, We've got ampersand stir, which is known as a string slice. 
So whenever you see an ampersand in a Rust type, that is a reference to little case str, str. So a, um, and another way of it talking about a reference to something of uh, multiple values, like a, an array or a string, is to call it a slice. So we take a slice of, uh, of str values. And that's actually distinct from string. There are technical reasons why that's the case, but it, what 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 has happened here is that these top three are of a different type to the the last um, to this the last case. And Rust is very pedantic about its types, and so we we've, we've been given an instruction: why don't you turn? Why don't you cast your string into a slice by providing it an ampersand? We'll do that. And then we get a different problem, which is around lifetimes. Uh, so the problem that we face is that we're creating temporary strings here on line seven. But every time that we go through the loop from zero to 100, uh, the tempor temporary values, the strings that we're creating get lost. And the compiler doesn't isn't really smart enough to know that Printing something out means we don't care about it anymore. Uh, it what it wants to know is that uh, it sort of sees this whole block and thinks, "Oh, well, I need you. I need the string to live long enough." And uh, so this reference will only live as long as uh, I th I'll say like line eight, basically. Uh, so that's not really enough. One way around this is we can cast, we can kind of do the reverse, which is send them all to strings. And then we get our result. Now the problem with this, if you are really into uh, high performance code, is you will know that a string is a memory allocation and you really dislike memory allocations. <laughs> so I've got something for you. Which is the um, uh, well? A we could just print straight away. We could um, we could actually use this print thing in here. Uh, but there, but there's another trick. Let's say that we don't want we want to uh, create a. Uh, so let's say I've got we'll do it a different way. Which is a common approach is to kind of have a temporary string. That you or a, like a, a temp, we'll just call it temp, and we want to push to it or like grow it over time. So temp push, we got a tester push do method, and we can do that all the way through. Temp push do. And what we're doing is growing the string again and again. Uh, we will encounter a problem later on, but I will fix that too. Now we've actually sort of solved our issue with uh, memory allocations because string literals don't imply a memory allocation later on. So you will save those nanoseconds that you were hunting for um, there are probably going to be a few problems with this. Uh, well, one is that we have uh, a syntax error, which isn't helpful. <clears throat> uh, what have I done wrong? I will just kind of back out. That looks fine. If I was coding in an IDE, it would probably tell me where my error is, but I'm not. Line 16. I think that... Ah, oh, I missed one here. Okay, oh, this should work. And line 12 ends with two closing parens. Oh, that's actually okay because, oh, oh um, 
Yeah, so, so um, we had one comment, which is um, at line 12 ends with two parens, and that's actually fine because this is a method call. Uh, and then we had um, Vince uh, say the right thing, which is that the main is opening, uh, missing the brace. So that's great. Cool, cool, cool. Now this should be closer to compiling. We should fix this index error. Now we've got a similar problem that we had before, which is that this string in the middle on line 12 is a temporary value that gets deleted as soon as it's um, as soon as it's evaluated. Now we encounter another thing with Rust, another sort of problem with Rust. And the, well, I say problem, it's actually an advantage. Rust does not allow mutation or modifications to variables once they have been initialized by default. We need to add this kind of mut or mute keyword. We get this big problem, you know, lots of red error error messages. I cannot borrow as mutable. Um, okay, great. So we've got our um, answer again. The there's one final uh, way to f um, if you so the, we we still have a kind of a weird problem, and that is the the we yeah. I will just. Explain show this because I think it I think it oh, it's actually in the format rust has a notion of this thing okay um, this include method rust has a notion of a concept called a, a trait and a trait is an interface or an abstract base class and so what we're doing is we're asking rust to bring in the abstract base class write uh, from the standard format module. Well, that will actually provide us a new macro. We had uh, we had print before, but we can actually write directly to uh, to the string. Now it might be a bit strange why. I'm just I'm using write when I was perfectly happy with uh, with push do, and the reason is that write is more general. If you have something like a a network socket or a file, you can use the write macro in a way that you cannot use uh, push do, because although the string type has a push to method. Some of those other types do not. Now, I wonder if this will work. I think that I don't need to cast i as a string anymore. So what we're seeing here with Rust, oh, no, consider remove, using a semicolon. OK, I'll do that. Uh, OK, I need to change the result of main now. So the interesting thing with the this write macro is that it returns a special type which may end up as a uh, it may end up as an error. So Rust does not have exceptions. I wonder if this will work. Implicit residue. Oh, I see. I need to. There's a couple of things that I can do. One is that I can add this question mark operator, which will say, so I actually know this won't help. What it wants is me to say, OK, and then put this little, uh, uh, these two brackets or two parentheses, uh, which is uh, designated as a kind of the nothing type, or we call it another word for it is the unit type. It only represents itself. So now we suddenly have uh, our program again, which is which is great. So I'll just talk a little bit about this question mark. Or like, what on earth is it? Um, the question mark is a what we call syntactic sugar for this particular method here, unwrap. So write returns a result. And it happens to be, and when it's okay, 
we get this kind of unit thing. But if when it's a prob when there's a problem with the write, you'll receive a uh, this standard format error. Now having unwrap all the way through your code is ugly and annoying, and so uh, you can just use these question marks as a way to to simplify what it is that you are trying to intend. Oh, excuse me. Your question mark will uh, either give you back the value inside. In our case, we don't care about it. Uh, it's just unit. Or it will return the function itself with the error. So it will basically abort um, at the position where an error is occurring. Okay, cool. I think we have done <laughs> we've done this buzz a few times. <laughs> Uh, who would like to do a different example? <laughs> uh, here's a fun one. Okay, what we want to do is parse an HTTP color code. I will uh, change my main again. We'll start from, from nothing. Feel free to ask any questions in the chat. If you have any comments, please just add them. I'll run this one very quickly to clear our screen, and then I will explain the problem and we'll carry on. What we're trying to do is, uh, I will just um, bring something up, is I want to be able to, let's say I've got a color, um, color code. So if it's a, um, You'll, if you've used HTML before, you probably would have seen things like this. And these six characters represent three numbers. They represent a, uh, a red channel, so red, blue, and a green. And I'll just use uh, RGB. And... Uh, what we're trying to do is convert this text or like the string, we want to convert it to an actual type. So I'm just going to create a type and uh, the red channel will be a U8, which is a, an unsigned 8-bit integer or a single byte. Blue channel I'll use four words just in case people haven't seen um, RGB color before. And you ain't, you ain't, you ain't. <laughs> so we've got three bytes. And so what we want to do is kind of like wave our magic wand and convert uh, these six characters to our struct. So like, what do we do? <laughs> Um, uh, there's a lot of ways to fix to kind of solve this, but I'm going to do it the hard way. Uh, I think um, I want to introduce another trait, and the other trait that I want to introduce is from stir. So I have got the what we call the stud module standard um, from standard string from stir. We'll bring that up actually because that's useful to know what this refers to. So if I go to doc.rustlang.org and I go through to the standard library, uh, the stud modules are what we need. I'm just going to search for them. <laughs> so the thing that way we're, we're trying to implement or we're just brought into local into our scope is from stir. So what the heck is that? Standard stir from stir. That looks familiar. Okay. Parse a value from a string. From stirs from stir method is often used implicitly through stirs pass method. Da, 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 da. Oh gosh. Okay, so we go into here, we need to like look at pars, like what the heck? <laughs> um parses the string into another type. So uh the like what is this other type? Okay, cool. So this is kind of what we want. Uh we want to parse uh and it just happens to be that the way that parse is implemented is that parse requires if the type if 
uh, to be to implement from stir. And so let's figure that out. Okay, let's do it. So one of the ways we can do it is just take the like <laughs> we can take the dummy code that is in our like in the docs, copy paste that into our thing and just kind of figure it out till it works. The first thing we kind of need to note though is we've got an error type in here, which is not actually very useful for us. So I'm going to have to add in, uh, I don't care about points, um, but I will create my own error type. So you may ask like, what is an error type? Um, an error type is whatever you want it to be. <laughs> and this is, it sounds a, a bit silly, but um, actually what I mean is, is uh, you can, designate any type as your error type. Uh, we're going to be creating a color parse error. I can be more specific. Uh, I, no, I'm just gonna just not be sp specific at all. And we'll just change that. So I've got from stir for point. We wanna change that to from store stir for RGB. And then, oh, by the way, I've just um, seen, um, uh, <laughs> it has to go. It's really cool to hang out. Um, and uh, yay, Rust! <laughs> I hope people have been enjoying the stream so far. And the da -da 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 -da, what am I doing? Okay, color pause era. I'm pausing more. And I want to, I'll just get rid of basically all of this. So. What I want to be able to do, I've got result, and you can see here that the documentation just uses parsing for numbers uh, using parse itself, which is interesting. So we're going to copy some of that. I'll start though by just saying RGB. Um, my red channel is going to be zero. Blue, zero. Green. Just to show what, so we're just going to have zero, 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 or maybe one, two, three. One, two, three is a little bit, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more interesting. Not, a, not as, not a particularly interesting color. <laughs> but um, hopefully, I can uh, demonstrate what's actually happening. So all we want is. Um, they just want to raw color, and my color is going to be raw color dot pars. Now we can't. I'm just going to add one more thing, which is like I'm going to derive debug. Debug will enable me to print a uh, kind of like print colors to this, or like print this RGB type to the screen. So I can print out with print line, uh, and I need to use kind of this funky syntax uh, with a question mark in there. And the other thing I'll need to do is um, un unwrap because I'm actually inside a parse return the result, and I want to get the thing that's outside of the result. So instead of talking about the OK, I want the RGB. Unwrap will take. Uh, a result and pull out whatever is inside it. So let's see if this compiles. We've got some unused things, okay, that we don't care about. Uh, I'll get rid of that. Doesn't compile. Uh, the problem is that parse is what we call too general. So let's, okay, so parse is saying, I want to know what it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so just a comment around unwrap is that if there is an error, <laughs> it will also blow up. So um, don't use unwrap in production code. It's kind of the guideline. Uh, right, so we want to parse. What are we parsing? We want to parse into RGB. So the way we do this is with kind of this like quite neat little syntax with uh, two colons and then angle brackets and then the type that we wish to parse into. This is the one of the ways uh, we wish to do it. 
Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, does not satisfy pass color debug. Cannot call the result RGB color. Okay. Oh, okay. So this is saying that uh, you can't possibly wish to print me out because uh, <laughs> your error type does not know how to print itself out. Which, fine. Thanks, Rust. We'll try and figure it out. Okay. We finally, we've got one more. We got one more compile error, and that is because we ignore the input. Uh, but actually, if you look at the bottom, we've actually figured out what we wanted. So let's let's fix the compiler errors. There we go. We've got them gone. We're like, yay! Um, by the way, if anyone uh, if anyone wants to follow along, I can um, I can share the link. I should actually. Uh, so there's the link for um, for where I am right now. If you'd like the link for any of the other spots, just let me know um, when we in the comments, and I will um, I'll post another link. Great. Okay. Now we need to actually do the work. <laughs> Sadly. Um, so the first thing that I want to introduce the ne or say the first the next thing that I wish to introduce is. Um, it's quite a cool sort of contract construct, which is another way to an, to kind of unwrap things. Um, this if let sum or or in our case, if it was a result, it'd be if let okay. Uh, but in uh, if let sum string strip if want to strip. Wish I could type. <laughs> very, very difficult to type when you're being watched. Uh, what I'm trying to tie, remove is a um, I want this pound sign or uh, hash sign to to kind of be removed from my string, and the remainder is available for us to process. So the red channel. Is and this is kind of this is a kind of I wonder if we can do something else. We saw that in the documentation we had the pars method being used in this side there. I wonder if I can do that again. It's quite a cool trick. And as instead of this um, syntax here. I'll, actually, I'll use it um, in both places. It's sort of equivalent to adding the type annotation or type uh, on on the left. Really, it looks a little bit better on the left. Um, I will see if this compiles because it does. This is interesting. It's actually really a little bit. Oh, it does. Okay, this is cool. This is a very elegant way of doing it. It's actually better than the the. Uh, it's a little bit better than the um, than my I, I've got my scripted <laughs> like my cheat sheet, and I'll maybe I'll show people what my cheat sheet is uh, after this. Okay, I will get this to work, and then I'll explain it. What we're doing now is taking all the little bits. And getting from zero, so this is the zeroth and the first. Um, this notation is an. Oh, actually, I just said that I'll explain it next. So let's do so. Four, and as you can guess, this one will be six. So it's going to be parsed as a U8. And um, we probably want to return result in here too. So I'm going to add my little. Ampersand, oh sorry, my question marks. We could use unwrap here as well, but I'm not want to. And then I need to return the uh, I need to return a struct. Not just a struct, but a the color itself. And that also needs to be <clears throat> the inside. And okay, because from stir returns a result. 
a result of self. So self is the RGB type. And the OK side of it, which is on the left here, is um, needs to have an OK there. Now you may ask why I have removed the variable names and the if long, and I think that this is right, when uh, it's the same. Oh, excuse me. Ah, excuse, no, no, no. So it's right. I'll explain what the new. The problem that the compiler has discovered is that my error type, so this self error error, is not the same as a parse int error. And so I can't use the question mark because a parse int, int error, which might occur if this parse fails, does not know how to convert itself into a parse color error. So I'm just going to ignore it for now. <laughs> and uh, actually, there is a way to I can I can make this a little bit better. Uh, and I'll do that next. But right now, we'll just get it to compile. Oh, I expected a U8, but I found an OK. Right, so for some reason, I've got a Oh, I've got a reference inside here, so I need to dereference these types now, or I need to dereference these values, which I can do with the star. The problem that it might occur is I might, uh, uh, yeah, I need to bring this back uh, because I'm no longer shadowing the variable names with. Um, And does this compile? No, expected uh, a unit, but I found a result. That's confusing to me. Consider adding, oh, okay. So the problem is that the compiler is confused. Because there could be a chance in which there is no uh, hash, hash symbol or pound sign at the start. And then there would be a case in which it wouldn't know what to do. So what it's telling me is that you need to include your error side. Let's see if this is happier. Aha. <laughs> it is heavier, but unfortunately, we now have a panic, which is unfortunate because I thought that this would work. Can anyone spot the bug? Good morning. <laughs> oh, I like it. Uh, so this is an interesting one. Sorry, if you could, I like how you parse it correctly, but on your first line in main, you have the wrong order of colors. Red, green, blue, or red, oh. Yes, I do. How embarrassing. <laughs> well, this is the problem when you, uh... oh, actually, it doesn't know about hex digits. That is exactly the problem. Uh, so this parse method is expecting base 10 numerals and we're giving it base 16 numerals. So an A is not from is not a valid number. I'm going to have to go back to my original. So I'm just going to cheat. This is probably, I was like, oh, wow, this looks really elegant and really kind of pretty. Uh, sadly, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, I've got a different way to, to, to do this, which is this U8 thing. So I've got the type here. The type is, in, in this sense, is being used as a namespace. From to do a radix. So I've got a radix of 16. So I can say, like, um, uh, it's a slightly different type than from stir here. And what it's saying is that 
I will be able to parse integers that are in different bases. In our case, we want to we want to parse things in base 16 rather than base 10. So that was exactly correct. The advantage of actually doing this as a group is that uh, other people can figure things out for me. So that's handy. Ah, and now we no longer have references. We've actually got actual U8s. So this can all go back. That's helpful and handy. Looks a little bit more. Aha, yay, congrats. Uh, so that is exactly right. Thank you so much, um, Matt. You're, you're awesome. You're like some internet points are headed your way. Actually, I should say that oh, I can. I, actually, Matt, if you find a way to contact me, my um, uh, you probably figured out that the way to get in contact with me is to like if you can find me on Twitter, I will. I'll see if I can get you a copy of my book. Um, I'll try and uh, as a, as a giveaway. I think that was really cool. Thanks so much for your input. Um, and okay, so now we need to. Like, we've got a problem here. If we pass on something that is really unexpected, um, then uh, we still get, we blow up. Now, why do we blow up? <laughs> That's because we've, we, we've got this unwrap thing. And the downside of unwrap, which has been mentioned one or two times before, is that we... Uh, we we kind of just panic, which is we crash without any error message, which is not particularly user friendly. Um, so I'm going to introduce another concept, which is that we've got this or else method. So uh, u8 from stir radix or radix uh, returns a result, and we can say that when you uh, when the error happens. But which happens to come through. We're just going to ignore whatever the parsing method says, and we're going to return an error, color parse error. So we could be more specific and maybe talk, you know, give our users some more information. Information, but. Uh, you know, <laughs> right now, I'm kind of like I don't really care. Like, <laughs> I I I do care actually, but right now, um, that would change this from like simple, easy example, embarrassing, it didn't work. Um, still crashes ah but we get a color parse error okay so it's kind of slightly better i can change this uh i can make it like now i know what people are oh no i i want to get on to the next example there are ways to make this more elegant uh, if you would like to learn about error handling in Rust, uh, the best place to look is the Anywho crate, I think, or Anyhow. So the Anyhow crate is here. And, oh, go to the latest version. It's been updated since my... <laughs> and it provides a very, very good way to deal with errors. Um, it requires a little bit of extra knowledge about what Rust what Rust is because it requires this thing like trait object. Like, what the heck is a trait object? I, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's actually easier than you expect. A trait object is just something that's kind of like dynamically typed. It's a little bit of dynamically typed stuff inside inside Rust. Uh, it's kind of like a cheat cheat code or something. Uh, let's do another example. I'm kind of we've done our um, we've done our HTTP. We can parse our hex codes. We can like parse CSS. Uh, one kind of 
thing that I'm so I'm clearing the screen now. I'm just thinking um, if you would, if you'd like, I could ask. I could try and do something. If you've got a problem that you'd like me to solve, um, I've got some time available. So uh, maybe I can get like ask people if if you'd like like what I'm what I'm offering. You give me a challenge, and I'm going to try and see if I can do it in Rust. I don't know if this is a you know, useful thing for me to do, but I we'll, we'll see if we'll see we'll see where I get to. Uh, <laughs> so feel free to ask in the comments or whatever. Uh, I've got one more question. Oh, sorry, I've got one more um, example, and that is um, run length encoding. So what the heck is run length encoding? Uh, let's go to Wikipedia and find out. Um, so, like, I move over to Wikipedia. I say, okay. Uh, run length encoding. And I get this thing about this article about, uh, about CompuServe, which is like an old internet provider. But the cool thing is that it's actually used for Conway's Game of Life. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, very simple compression algorithm. Uh, it's also used in other um, bits and pieces as well, often for graphics. Now, how do we, how do we, how do we compress? Um, so we've got, got a function, uh, compress, and we take in a, you know, like text as input, and we're just going to say it's a string, and then we want to return some string as output. You'll notice that they are different types. Uh, so I'm going to add something that's a little bit more complicated. But because you're all enthusiastic Rust learners, <laughs> uh, here's a trick for being able to accept either a string or a stir or any type that is able to turn itself into a string slice. And text, and then as ref. Now our type text is stir. Doesn't matter what it came in as. Ampersand stir, by the way, the difference between ampersand stir and string is that uh, it's kind of technical and annoying. A string is a an owned value in the Rust world. A string can kind of live anywhere, and all you have locally is a reference to that data. But you can't actually, you don't have full control over it. A string is kind of something that you you fully own. And in fact, when your own scope, when, when you, and I say you're the compress function, when the compress function goes out of scope and there was a string uh, in the middle here, uh, the string would also get deleted. Now, because we're returning a string, uh, the string will be deleted. Uh, uh, when main closes, we'll finish up. OK, cool. Now, uh, so now we've still got to do our compression. So I'm going to, does anyone, uh, let's start with, um, our, with our like our plain text, maybe we should call it a plain text and a cipher text because cipher sounds cool. Uh, you, uh, com what we're looking for in the compression algorithm is that strings of the exactly the same value compress to the same uh, compress very well. Um, so allow, see, that was the wrong thing to do. Uh, up here. Okay, so what have, what have I got now? The, I'm just looking for my thing. Sorry. I'm looking for my cheat sheet so that I don't make a mistake. I've done this before, I've got it. Um, but I also, oh, that's the other one. I've 
Gosh. Might just have to do it from scratch. That'd be embarrassing. <laughs> I'm really annoyed because I uh I can't I, I like I've I've got it. And I've already done it, so I don't want to have to do it again. I don't want to have to think it's nearly eleven PM. By the way, I'm in New Zealand. It is 11 p.m. here. <laughs> uh, I've just... Um, uh, Sorry, I'm failing now. My brain is deciding to melt. Um, okay. And... I feel like having like a like a musical interlude. I am do, 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 do. I want to sorry everyone. I feel like Actually, I'm going to have to go. <laughs> this is, uh, no. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Ah, I found it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, just ignore the last 10 minutes. I, um, so this one is actually a little bit different. Uh, I didn't quite realize exactly how difficult it is, but um, maybe maybe that's okay. We'll do this bit by bit. I have. Uh, I wish I had an actual text editor. Now, compress, we have some text. I'm going to change this to compressed, compress. I had my text. This is all going to be the same, except that uh, my variable name has changed from text to S. And I'm going to yes, and so what we do is we take every arbitrary type T, uh, a reference to it, and now there's a whole bunch of garbage that is important to explain. So I'll just prove that this works, and then debug it if it doesn't because it's bound to fail. Oh, I need to print it out at the end, otherwise it doesn't make much sense. Uh, yeah, so it's it always this compiler warning is just saying that the the variable itself isn't um, isn't used. So, and just to make it really obvious, I'm going to print the plain text and then have the compressed version in the next line. Consider compressed. Oh. use the actual variable okay so here's the original and here is our output now i have also got an extra guard that is if we hit nine we um we pause so if i add extra b's we'll actually uh go again and this means that i won't be ambiguous because if i had a problem if i wanted to encode numbers uh, it becomes really unclear if I'm talking about a number or a digit if I decided to have um, numbers in there as well. Okay, so you can see that 
where there are parts of the input string that are repeated, that run length encoding can compress it quite well. Uh, with just a, quite a simple algorithm, so with 26 lines, we have uh, we've actually kind of reduced, you know, 40% of the original string length. Uh, so there isn't um, that. That's pretty cool. And <laughs> and oh, I just had a question. Like, which OS are you using? Um, I'm on Linux, so I run Ubuntu. And yeah, the question is like, well, why are you using Azure? Um, we can use uh, Stir, and that will be fine for this. But the the advantage of what we can do with Azure is that it enables us to accept any string or any text type. now it's a string and it will work <laughs> no <laughs> uh, what this function takes zero arguments one was applied oh i know the constructed like the new method does not take a string like as an input i need to call two string or whatever that was embarrassing that was really embarrassing uh, and now it's saying that I've got a move value, da da da, and I want to use it twice. So, um, what is happening there is that because it's now a string, we talked about strings being owned, the value was being passed in to um, the compress. And so, at the end of compress on line 26, the actual original string gets, in, gets deleted. Um, so, to avoid that, we actually need to pass a reference to the string. Um, and which actually, as it happens, turns into the same, uh, it turns into exactly the same, uh, I, but just to prove a point, I will add, um, another text type, which is this thing, uh, called a cow, which is a copy on write. Can either be owned or borrowed. Uh, we can take their owned variant. And I think I can just pass it without a reference. So you, we'll just put up yeah. So the point is that it just provide it it is more flexible on what it accepts whereas if i restricted the the type of s to uh like i'm probably going to be embarrassed here it's probably actually going to be fine um but if i hopefully it will compile it will hopefully it will refuse to compile <laughs> say hopefully just because i don't want to be proven wrong in front of dozens of people <laughs> no. Ah, so the reason why this works is that when I take a, a reference to a cow, I would I get a stir, like a, a string slice. So it's quite Rust is quite smart. Rust is really making it very very difficult for me to look intelligent. Okay, <laughs> so maybe we'll just leave it as ampersand stir because that apparently is what Rust wants. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and so the question was instead as uh, so this the comment that you know I uh, I looked quite silly because I was calling string new and I had a compiler error, uh, you know that looked kind of annoying, and uh, but actually you probably can call from and I'll just silence this um, this error or warning. So I can actually create there is a constructor of string. Uh, that that takes a value and since I'm actually taking a string from a strings let's get back <laughs> to run length encoding shall we <laughs> uh, okay so we start with our uh, count value 
So uh, imagine we're at the very start of the string. So we're, we're, we are before the first A. So we haven't seen A yet. Now, at that point, we have no values that, so we've got, and then we've also got no previous value. Uh, I'm going to allocate a uh, an output string that, and we'll say that the string length, the, the, we'll optimistically say it will be 50% as long as the original. Um, this temporary or this mutable value here is not necessary. I could um, call uh, the, the chars method um, into the input directly. So what it's saying is, and let's see if this works. We just made one change. I was playing around with the code, and so um, I had it as its own value, but the, or own, but it's probably not important. Oh. And we got a timeout with the playground. So apparently the playground is being like some like attacked, like a denial of service, service attack, which is perfect for a live stream. That's exactly what you want. <laughs> and it got killed again. So I wonder if actually that was important. Probably not. I'm still convinced. Oh, maybe. That's weird. Ah, uh, wait, wait, I know why. <laughs> I need to create the iterator and then call next on the iterator itself. So what I was doing was calling s chars and then calling next on the very first element. And so it was doing this an infinite number of times. We don't want an infinite number of times. In fact, we'd prefer it gets to the end of the string instead of saying at the very first a. Now, if we have not, if we have, so this reads as if there is no previous value, which is will only happen once, then assign previous to sum of c. So we copy c with like this character c. Uh, a becomes so in the on the very first iteration, they're on iteration one, that will be sum of A. And I'm specific with the single quotation marks here. Rust, the character type, is distinct from the string type. A character type is actually encoded differently. It's four bytes long. The uh, I and, and represented in string literal or in literals with a single byte, whereas strings or well, string slices uh, have a double by a uh, double quotation mark. Okay, so this is an iteration one. We get, we become a, or previous becomes a. Now, what we do is say that if you unwrap, so uh, at this point we know we can guarantee that previous will always be sum, because uh, if it is none, it's been replaced. If it doesn't. If it's a different character, so in this case, it will only be true at this B point here. Uh, or we have reached nine. Then add another value. So now we, we, we push string to into encoded. It's actually possible for us to avoid um, if you know about the format macro, this actually creates an, a temporary string, which we can eliminate. But I will skip on, skip ahead to um, to that soon. We we've got count there as zero. Oh, and then we reset the count. Previous becomes the current value or the current character that we're iterating through, and then we increment c. So, oh, we increment count. Uh, when we get to the end, we still, so we're at the very last C. At the very last C, we have a problem, and that is we've still got a character left, and the, oh, we've still got previous and count. Count is uh, still valid, and previous is valid. 
I've got this nested block here, which actually protects from uh, an empty string being passed in. So I'll just show what why what I mean. Uh, if there's nothing, if there's no input, uh, we receive no output. Um, if there isn't that block, <clears throat> we push. We get we get garbage um, because remember that we really wanted to uh, for previous to be. Um, we need we wanted the inside of previous and what we now have is an option so we'll say okay um we'll fix that then we'll, we'll follow the compiler's advice and then we get zero none which is not run length encoded okay so that's um that's a demonstration of why i i've got this little block at the end <laughs> hopefully ah so i said hopefully that song solved our problem i did say that i can remove a temporary yeah and i want to do that with use standard format so, uh, i'm bringing in a the right trait from the standard format module or stud format and that when I bring that trait into local scope, I now have access to a write macro, which looks a lot like format, except it doesn't return a string, uh, and it doesn't push. It writes directly to uh, something that's writable, and the, and and strings are writable. I think that's right. Let's check. No unhappy with me why is it unhappy probably because i've got a, i've introduced a syntax error maybe it's one of these ah great okay cool now i've got a different problem which is that write returns a, a result so i need to need to unwrap that also it's a bit yucky. It's not really what we should be doing, but we know that we're going. We're writing to a string. We're not actually writing to like a network socket or a file. So we're not going to receive an I/O problem. Uh, and so that's it's not a concern that we we need to worry about. So we are very confident that the writing will succeed. There could be a possibility that the, there won't be enough memory, uh, and this one doesn't need to be unwrapped because we've already unwrapped it. Aha, and now we're fixed. Yay, hooray. Okay, cool. So now we have a, a really good question, which is like, what is the fundamental difference between a char and an... Um, and in this ampersand stir thing, as both takes a maximum of four bytes for each cup. Okay, so th this is another way of answering the question. So, <laughs> so we want uh, we got a, a string, and that is and I've got this of type char and you are only a single byte um, and we can also actually it could be fun and add like some unicode or emoji variable names <laughs> as well um, uh, anyway let's put no let's not bother right now because i don't have a mommy anyway so like, what is the difference? There's actually one, a couple of others that I want to, I may as well talk about as well. And I think just to see, just to be confusing. <laughs> These are all, 
Actually, maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> the contents are actually distinct. Um, and that is different from uh, slice, right? Uh, okay, we'll start with the difference between these. There's actually something else which I think is important too to distinguish. That's similar to these two. And I can add R uh, as well. In fact, there's a couple of others. As, there are a couple of other literals that are useful to know. The original question, though, which is up on the screen, is like, what is the difference between these two types? So uh, I'll bring up the Rust documentation. And what we want is size of. Think, Ended memory size of. And actually, here's a good chart. <laughs> it says char is always four. Now, so, but a string is one, two, four, because in, so this is, uh, I'll just actually, we'll do it. Uh, Use standard memory size of. So we'll just inspect uh, roll call size of. Now we can go and pull the type ourselves, but I'm just going to, like, we can ref use reflection to, like, introspect. C, but I'm not going to because I can't be bothered right now. <laughs> uh, I've got four. So that's handy. Now, what does it do when I have a string slice? This is deceptive. I've got 16 bytes. And the reason is that inside, so this is actually. This is deceptive. So what this size here is that an ampersand stir is, let's just call this struct string slice. Uh, is like a pointer. And in Rust terminology, a pointer is um, this kind of weird syntax, which is, um, star mu UA. Um, it's kind of like a raw pointer. Like all of these things are one type, and <clears throat> and then I've got length, which is a U U size, which happens to be U size is the size of a pointer. So th the size of the pointer in a sixty-four bit CPU is eight bytes. So the size of the type is sixteen bytes. Now that isn't actually very helpful because what you're interested in or the question is like, well, how wide is the C? And then uh, that's a difficult question to ask because in some sense, it's it's a pointer to some data that is encoded as UTF-8. UTF-8 is a variable length encoding, which means that the C here uh, this C here takes a single byte. But if I were to like, like find a, a different Unicode value and like um, then it turns out that this one is longer than uh, you than like a single byte. It is four bytes. Now, how do I copy? This is silly. 
I shouldn't. Oh, I just. Here we go. I've got one by here, and if I add the triple clef, you can see that it, that the browser has been a bit confused because actually it's it's quite wide, and so it's given it enough space for four um, for several brights, and uh, but it turns out that this our output won't change. Uh, we still get four and sixteen. I'll need to look up how to go and find. To iterate through each character or each Unicode code point <laughs> and find their lengths. Um, that's a bit annoying to do. I, uh, and I shall, I'll just actually pause there because I've just hit quarter past 11 at night and <laughs> it's probably time for me to go to bed. <laughs> It's been really fun hanging out and um and I've really, really enjoyed the chat. Um and I've really enjoyed people's discussion. Um but I'm gonna go. <laughs> uh yeah, again, it's been really fun hanging out and I really encourage you to like click follow and subscribe and uh if you're interested in the code, I can I can put links um, online. Just follow me on Twitter or what have you, or ask a question in the comments, and I'll come back later tomorrow or sometime this weekend uh, and 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 send those links around. But I should go to bed. <laughs> it's nearly twenty past eleven at night, so um, it's been really cool, and um, I shall see you again later. Bye bye.